I'm back and it feels so great to be out shooting again. Now, if you watched last week's video, you may know that I had a bit of a catastrophe and lost basically a good proportion of my photography equipment. I lost both my cameras, which was a bit of a bitter, bitter blow. But I am back. And you may be wondering exactly what have I done to replace those cameras. So basically the insurance claim uh, is taking a very, very long time. And I have to say, I've got no confidence that it's gonna be resolved anytime soon. I'm forecasting it, it's gonna be a number of weeks, maybe over, an, over a month more until um, that's actually done and dusted. So that really kind of left me with two choices. Do I sit on the sidelines at arguably the best time of year for landscape photography, waiting for a claim to come back um, at some unknown date in the future? Or do I just take a short-term financial hit and go out and buy some new camera equipment, uh, more affordable equipment that allows me to get back out in the field and start shooting again? Out of those two options, I went for the latter. And um, basically, the new camera that I've gone for is the Nikon D750 and I bought it second hand off eBay. It's a well used camera and I managed to get it for an absolute bargain price. So I'm really, really pleased with that. It's a, a brilliant camera that I previously owned. Um, I, I think the, the D750 is five years old and I think I originally bought it around 2014-ish. Um, I think the, the back end of 2014 is when it came out, but could be wrong on that. Um, but basically I own that camera for a number of years. It was a beautiful camera. Um, I was very, very impressed with it. So I know my way around it. So it, to me, it kind of made logical sense to, to get that camera again, because it's full frame. It'll work well with all of my lenses. I know my way around it. And because it's a camera that's a few years old now, it's uh, you can pick it up for a pretty competitive price, particularly second hand. So that made an awful lot of sense to me. Um, in terms of my vlogging setup, I basically got a second-hand Canon 200D so I've gone for exactly the same vlogging camera again it's a camera that's been out for a few years and you can pick it up at quite a competitive price second-hand so it's uh, again it made sense because I know my way around it it's a really capable little camera and um, yes yeah, it allow me to seamlessly go back into vlogging uh, without any kind of learning curve for new equipment so I think I've made the right choice there but only time will tell um, um, so yeah, it feels great to be back out again. What I'm gonna do longer term when the insurance claim comes back in, I'm not too sure at this point. Um, part of me thinks that I'm just gonna hold on to the D750 for the foreseeable future uh, and just shoot with that, because it, it, it's a very capable camera. Um, yes, I miss the D850, but you know, I, I've gotta make a compromise and I think the D750 will be absolutely fine for the foreseeable future. So um, yeah, I don't want to commit to exactly what my plans are at this stage. We'll just have to see how the insurance claim pans out. But that's kind of my way of thinking really. Um, so today I'm out to try and capture the last dying breaths of uh, peak autumn. It's been really frustrating sitting on the sidelines. So yeah, hopefully I can get out and uh, capture a few nice images today. So I found a beautiful little autumnal scene just behind me here. You can see this cascade, this waterfall here. It's running quite high because we've had quite a lot of rain in the last few days. So it looks quite dramatic there. What's really caught my eye here is just above me here, there's a beech tree. I think it's a beech tree. I'm not an expert on my trees, but I'm pretty sure it's a beech tree. But you've got fantastic kind of yellows and oranges up in those branches there. And it just sits on this part of the river, just after the waterfall here. And what it means is, I don't know if you can see on the rocks all behind me here, they're all coated in these beautiful carpet leaves. It looks absolutely tremendous. 
So I've got my camera set up nice and low in a pretty precarious position, but I'm pretty sure it's uh, rock solid. But I'm a little bit nervous after my look lately, but I'm pretty sure it's all right. Um, I've got nice and low to the water there, and um, it looks quite promising. So I'll take you in a little bit closer, and I'll explain a little bit of my thought process here and the settings I've gone for. It's really muddy and slippy in this area, so I've got to be very careful here. You can see my tripod set up nice and low there, and to get it into that position, I've had to put one of the tripod legs here across the actual river. But it's important to get nice and low because it captures all of these beautiful leaves you can see here in their full glory. So if I kneel down, the composition I'm kind of going for is something a bit like that. The main cascade here sits out in the right, and then the river kind of flows diagonally through the shot, drawing the eye into the image. And then you've kind of got leaves kind of on both sides of the river. The two main concerns I had with this shot is the highlights up here in the sky. I didn't really want to include too many of uh, too much of that area there because it doesn't really add anything to the shot whatsoever. Um, there's nothing to say in that part of the image. There's, there's no detail there and it's just going to be distracting. So I'm going to really try and minimize the amount of sky I include in the image. And then really my other concern is this big dark area here. It would be beautiful if this had some leaf coverage as well, but it's so steep that all the leaves had fallen down to the bottom. So yeah, there's a, there's a danger that this area could be too dark. There is a nice coating of moss here, so I think in post-processing I'm just going to try and lighten this area and make sure it's not a distraction to the rest of the image. Um, but that's pretty much it for composition. I'm going to have to focus stack this image because the actual leaves that are close to the lens are probably about foot and a half away from it, so it's going to be very difficult to get them sharp in the front of the composition and then everything else looking nice and sharp behind it. So the first image in my focus stack sequence, I'm going to focus back on the actual cascade of water there. But also for that shot, I'm probably also going to take uh, a two-stop under exposure bracket shot as well, just to make sure that I'm not blowing out highlights unnecessarily in this sort of area. The dynamic range on the D750 isn't as good as the dynamic range on the D850. So I'm just having to adapt my shooting style a little bit, and that may mean taking more bracketing insurance shots just to make sure I'm not pushing the highlights too far in parts of the image just like that. The second image in my focus stack sequence is going to be somewhere in the mid-ground about here, and then finally the final shot will be just in front of the lens um, on the closest leaves in the actual composition. In terms of settings for each of the shots, I'm taking them at about f9, um, which is giving me reasonable depth of field. I've got uh, ISO 250 dialed in and a shutter speed of half a second. I'm having to raise that ISO just that little bit higher just to allow me to get the shutter speed that bit quicker. I like shooting at half a second because it gives good detail with a good degree of movement at the same time. However, on the image um, I've taken in my foreground of the shot, I have also taken a second shot uh, taken at fifth of a second and the reason there is that will capture just a little bit more detail in the water so if I feel when I'm blending these exposures together that the, the, the foreground there just needs a little bit more crispness to the water then I can blend in that extra exposure just to add that in. I'm shooting all the shots here at about 20 mils and I've got the circular polarizer on just to punch out the colors and take the sheen off the rocks.
I thought I'd quickly just show you a few of the raw files from my image sequence. The standard exposure is on the left hand side here and the two stop under exposure is on the right hand side. Now if we switch the view to show you the clipping in each respective image, there's a few takeaways here. Firstly, you can see that the highlights have been controlled more effectively in the two stop under exposure, but it hasn't managed to control them fully. Um, but that's not too much of an issue because quite frankly, there's not gonna be any detail in those tiny little bits of sky, which I'm that bothered about retaining. So that's not too much of a concern. The other interesting point here, and probably the more interesting point is you can see on the standard exposure in the top left and the bottom right, we are getting a little bit of clipping in the actual shadows. Now, I put this down to the new camera actually. I'm fairly confident that on the D850, I wouldn't be experiencing any clipping in those areas. And I just think it's down to the reduced dynamic range that I'm shooting with. And I think um, momentarily I actually forgot that I was shooting with a new camera. Um, I don't think it's too much of a big issue. The clipping's only very, very small. And to be honest, there's not gonna be anything uh, detail-wise that I'm that bothered about in those very deep shadow areas there. But even so, that's something for me to keep in mind with future shoots. I may need to consider doing some uh, overexposure bracketing as well to combat this. But that pretty much brings me to a close on today's video. If you've got any thoughts on the D750, the new D D750 that I've got, or the, uh, the first image that I managed to capture with the camera, pop them down below. And if you haven't yet subscribed, please smash that subscribe button for more content from me in the future. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you all soon.